Welcome to Vegas Talk. This is Rose Donahue, and I would like to thank the Donut Bar for making Donuts with Dina possible today. <laughs> today we're speaking with Congresswoman Dina Titus. That's quite a donut you have. I know. It's nice to have them in District 1. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's really good, too. All right, I'll try not to eat it during the interview. But <laughs> I might finish it. It's hard to resist. It. It's so good. Yeah. So how are you today? I'm good. Uh, the weather's good. It's nice to be home. Uh, among friends, and so things are okay. Well, thanks for inviting us to your office. We've had you on the show a couple times before, so it's, it's cool seeing behind the scenes well, of your life. Now you're out on the road, you can stop by and see us next. You'll have to come to Washington to see us. That is such a good idea. <laughs> okay, I'll put that on the to-do list. We'll factor that in the budget somehow. Perfect. So what is one of the main things that you feel is necessary for you in Congress right now? Uh, like, is there any particular subject you're working on you're super passionate about? Because you have well, a lot of projects. Well, I do, uh, but I have represent a very interesting district. You know, it goes from the airport to Cashman Field, from Nellis to Durango. It's the heart of the valley. And so we have the state's largest employer, MGM, and the smallest, taco trucks. So mm -hmm. everything in between. It's also very ethnically diverse. We have the Hispanic East Side, the Asian West Side, Armenian Church, Ethiopian cab drivers, people from all over the world are here. So that gives me a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities. So given that, I would say right now that uh, Donald Trump's uh, ban on the Muslims was a huge issue for this office, and we're so pleased that the Ninth Circuit upheld the stay on that ban, so that made Absolutely. a big difference. Absolutely. So how do you see that ban affecting Las Vegas moving forward? Well, in addition to it affecting individuals and uh, to dividing families, stranding people, in fact, there was a professor from UNLV who was stranded, who was doing research and couldn't get back here. We've been helping with their case, or her case, but uh, it has a bad impact on uh, tourism. You know, we are trying to attract tourists from all over the world. We get about 40 million tourists a year. About a quarter of those come from some other country. And we're putting out this message, come to Las Vegas, you're welcome here, have a good time. Then you have the president saying, no, you're not welcome here. And having a ban on seven countries doesn't just affect those seven countries, it sends a message to the rest of the world. What is the best thing for citizens to do in this situation if they are against the ban and they don't want him to move forward or they want to make sure their representatives are blocking it as best they can? Well, you've seen a lot of public outrage. People have gone to airports to protest. Absolutely. They're in the streets protesting. Uh, there's been more activism uh, since the election than I've seen in a long time. We just need to keep that momentum going into 2018 election. And we also need to be sure we educate the public about just what is going on. That's a big part of advocacy. Certainly. How about calling in? What's the difference? Does that make a big difference? Well, it does. Uh, calling into the representative's office. And also attending town halls. You've seen where some Republicans have had town halls and they've just been stormed by people telling them, do your job, this is not what we elected you for. And that makes a big difference. It scares some of them. They run out the back door because they don't want to face their constituents. No way. Yeah, Wait, yeah. for real? No? Yes. I they just go out the back door. Do exactly. they climb out the window? Well, uh, they might. They, I, know, I know they sneak out where they can get out. Fire, escape, window. Anything to, to avoid talking to people out front who are angry with them for the positions they are taking. The vents. Do you think they would climb through the vents? <laughs> well, they're very easy in this office. I'm going out the front door. Okay, well, thank you for doing that. Yes, I appreciate right. that. I actually, I did call your office uh, yesterday, your okay. D.C. office, just to thank you. Oh, well, for that's the nice work, to hear. Yeah, the work you're doing, specifically with pink tax. Oh, yes, that's another issue we're working on. Yeah, could you tell everyone a little bit about it? I think it would be better coming from yes. you. Yes. Well, in Nevada, we have sales tax on just about everything you buy except necessities. And necessities are food and medicine. 
that's how it's defined. But under food, candy is a necessity. Now, I would argue that feminine hygiene products are necessities for women from the age of about 15 to 55. And every month you have to buy these. And so why don't we take the sales tax off of those products like we take off of other necessities? Now, you may think, oh, that's a small amount. But over the course of a lifetime, that can add up. And men don't ever have to worry about paying that. So it's an unfair tax. In addition to that, you take, say, a single mother who's trying to uh, raise three daughters, now it really starts to add up and can make a difference. So we want to get rid of the, get rid of the pink tax. Yeah, All only right. pink donuts. Okay, women unite. Yeah. <laughs> That's something you can write into your state legislator because they have a version of it in Carson City mm -hmm. and we're working on some angle at the federal level. Wow. We don't do sales tax at the federal level, but the, what we're doing there is to try to give a tax rebate to people off your income tax to make up for what you pay in sales tax. So, Don't you think that's fair? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. And especially with new taxes coming in with marijuana being legal. Oh, in the that's US right. Now. That's right. Or, well, in, in Nevada. Nevada, in Nevada. Pardon, Nevada. pardon me, in Nevada now. So, uh, that, can you tell me, what are your thoughts on how those taxes will affect Nevada and well, we have this decrease in tourism because of Trump's uh, decisions. Do we have an increase because of legalized marijuana? Well, there's some thought that if we have recreational or adult use marijuana, that people will come here for that to enhance their tourism experience. I think that's what they've seen in Colorado. Uh, and so we would think that it would be the same here. But right now, you can't, uh, by state law, you can't smoke marijuana in public places. So I think Tick Segerblum has a bill in Carson City to open that up a little, which would certainly be part of the tourism attraction. Do you have any concerns about Jeff Sessions being Attorney General and affecting Nevada? Well, the Attorney General under President Obama had kind of a hands-off approach. They took the position, we're not going to use federal resources to go after marijuana uh, industry in states where it is legal. But Sessions has had a very different attitude, very anti-marijuana, so now that he is going to be Attorney General, he could have a very different policy and use federal attorneys or federal law enforcement to shut down facilities. Now, there are enough states that we hope we reached a tipping point and he won't do that. The majority but, of the states, you know, that's well, that's right, it's yeah. over half, and especially if you're talking about medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. But uh, we hope that he'll look somewhere else for something to do. But this administration is so crazy, you can't tell what they're going to do. Yeah, the holding on to the war on drugs thing. But that was a long time ago. Right. Let's talk Times have changed. Times have changed. And there are other more grave issues within, you know, illegal drugs, you know, right. heroin epidemic, all these other issues. Well, also the opioid epidemic which is legal drug, prescription drug, oh, absolutely. that has, has caused such a problem in our veteran population. It's caused homelessness. The, all those opioids that people just take excessively are causing huge problems. Yeah, terrible. Well, when it comes to question two, I always appreciate it. Don't panic. It's organic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a member of the Cannabis Caucus mm -hmm. in Congress. I'm a co-sponsor of bills to do more research uh, to allow the VA to offer it as an option. And banking is a big issue because federal uh, regulations on banks make banks reluctant to do business with the marijuana industry. So it's a cash and carry. Now that's two problems. One, it leads to crime. And the other problem is you can't really hold it accountable in order to get some tax revenue from it because you don't know how much money is there if you don't have a banking account. Hmm. So there are a lot of things to sort out. That's true. Probably. And we have a lot of challenges in Congress now after, since the election. Sure. What it, when you go into work, when you're in Washington, what is the high point of your experience and your, the low point in, in a general day? Well, I, I see my job as twofold. One is legislating in Washington and one is serving people here in the district. 
And the high point, I think, is the serving people. I still have people who come up to me and say, oh, you helped us keep our house back during the root recession when there were so many foreclosures. There's nothing better than that. Or a family, we help a lot of families who are being torn apart by immigration problems. Uh, we help a lot of veterans get back benefits that they deserve. And when somebody comes in with tears in their eyes and say, you changed our life, that's the high point. The low point, I think, is, uh, well, one low point recently was sitting at the inauguration and seeing Donald Trump sworn in instead of Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah, I was a joy seeing you on the campaign trail with her. It was a, it was a moment in history. I'm sorry it didn't turn out a different way. Well, we'll make the best of what we have for now. That's what you have right, to do. Right, and you got to just suck it up and keep fighting the good fight. Certainly, and we're fortunate to have people like you representing well, us. Thank you. So, so when can we rename the airport the Dina Titus <laughs> International Airport? Well, uh, I think you have to be dead for some of that. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to rush that. Thank you. It's, no, a, it's a nice compliment. There's some talk about renaming the airport for Harry Reid. Uh, another person you could, you could name it for would be Howard Cannon. He's the one who was a senator from Nevada for many years who actually was on the Commerce Committee. They called him Mr. Aviation. He uh, deregulated the airlines and really started Nevada as a national, international tourism spot. So that, there's that. But then we also have a McCarran statue in Washington. And I don't think McCarran really represents modern Nevada. I hope we can change that out for somebody else, too. What is it about him that you feel he doesn't represent? Well, he was very anti-immigrant. He was very anti-Semitic. Uh, his values, he was very much of a Carthyite during the time that he was in office. And I just don't think that's what the symbol you want on an airport. Certainly not, especially with all of this drama happening that's right. nationally. That's right. We should, we're so we should kind of dig in to what we do care about and we want us to represent ourselves. That's right. You could look at um, the statue of Grant Sawyer, maybe. He was here when we desegregated uh, gaming and really got gaming going and he was big in civil rights. Somebody like that that's more reflective of, I think, the majority of Nevada's values. Definitely. And we did go blue this past election, right. so we that's are right. a progressive state. Mm -hmm. We care about it being acceptance and love to have visitors. That's right. It's a Vegas kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any parting words you'd like to tell our audience? We do have a young audience, so any ideas on, again, how to get involved, where the best resources are for learning about politics? Well, you know, I taught at UNLV for 35 years, and I enjoyed interacting with young people. I was the head of the, the faculty advisor for Young Democrats, and I think interacting with students kept me younger by keeping me in touch with what they thought was important. We sometimes forget to reach out, we get to talking about Social Security instead of talking about something that's relevant to young people. So I would say we need you involved, we need your voices, something like the pink tax would be important, something like access to college, maybe free community college, those kind of issues that you care about because it's about your future. You're the ones that are going to be involved. I think maybe young people also really care about environmental issues, and, uh, and that's very important here in Nevada. Renewable energy, water conservation, uh, public lands. So we just, we need your voice and we need your vote. So any way you can get involved. Right. And we want to keep nuclear out of here, right? Yes, we do. We don't want Yucca Mountain. Just chain me across the road. You know, <laughs> start None of that Yucca Mountain. Right. What are the chances of anything like that happening in Nevada? Well, we fought it for a long time. This goes back to 1988. But uh, now that the Republicans are in control of both houses and Senator Reid is gone, I think they're going to try to push it here. So it, this is something that's going to take all our efforts because we aren't a wasteland and we don't generate any of that waste. And we did our share for all the time of atomic testing. We, you know, let's let somebody else take a turn. Sure, sure. I guess we have stable tectonic plates, is my understanding about it. Well, I think it's the science is bad. I think, you know, right. you know, I don't think the science supports it. They always seem to find a way to accommodate whatever they discover. So it's no one showstopper that says this isn't good enough and always just becomes a way to fix it. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about politics than science because 
there's a water table out there, there's earthquake potential out there. It's not very far from Las Vegas and trucks or trains would have to come right through here. Mm -hmm. You have one accident and then that would destroy everything we've ever built our economy. Wow. So bad politics and exactly. questionable science. All right, we need to get Bill Nye on our side there you for go. the next, or no, no, I'll have to get in touch with him. I'll see what I can do. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank uh, you. Thank you for the so donuts. Yeah, we'll have to like totally finish this box before we head out. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. So I look forward to seeing you again and maybe seeing you in Washington. You can find my office easily because it has a cardboard cut out of Elvis Presley by the front door. How perfect. So fun. We're, we're not yeah, just so family. cool and hip. There you go. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Nina. Thank you very much. If you want to learn more about Congresswoman Gina Titus, we will include a link in our description. Check it out and stay tuned for more from Vegas Talks.